This is iPhone SE. Let's do it. $399 or 420 pounds. That's the price you have to pay to get the internals of a 2020 phone and the external of a 2014 phone. But here's the twist. It's an iPhone. Wait a second, let's hit pause real quick because in the description is a link to get you 30 days of Amazon Prime for free. All you gotta do is make an account and after you do that and you put all your card details in, go ahead and cancel the subscription so it will automatically end after your free trial ends so that it doesn't charge your card after the 30 days. But you'll be able to get next day deliveries on tons of items. And literally every item on Amazon exists, even a projection keyboard. On top of that, you're getting tens of thousands of movies and TV shows on Amazon Prime, Two and a Half Men, Modern Family, and Prime Originals. Plus Prime Music, so you can go ahead and cancel your Spotify subscription. And all of this is only for eight quid a month. So if you're interested, check that out now. At first I was pissed. But then I realized, you know what, it's actually kind of smart. Apple recreated a design and experience that people were familiar with. This isn't for people who are into tech. No, this is for the people who want an iPhone which gets the job done at an affordable price. If that's you, then this is perfect for you. Like I said, 2020 internals because this guy supports fast charging, but typical Apple style, they brought a 5 watt adapter in the box get the lightning earphones and then obviously it charges with a lightning cable and back to the point of 2020 internals the selling point here is the a13 bionic chip for those of you who don't know what that is that's the processor that's powering this guy this is the processor that's also powering the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And if you don't know, iPhone speeds are one of the best. So putting the flagship processor in the budget phone, that was a smart move. And diving deeper into that, this means that a powerful processor powering a dated body, this guy's gonna age well. Think of it like this, a bodybuilder can do a thousand reps with 5kg. And since the body is so cheap, this means that this powerful processor isn't being challenged, which means it can go above and beyond. It also means this phone is going to last a long time. And for a $400 phone, you're not just getting a quality camera, you're getting an iPhone camera. And I don't want to sound like I'm fanboying over this, but love or hate Apple, their cameras have standards. So let's dive in and have a quick look at it. 12 megapixels single rear camera and for those of you who don't care about the megapixels rightfully so basically this guy can record at 4k 60 frames and for the photos you're not getting a wide angle or a telephoto it's as simple as it gets but you know what i think it looks pretty good and if you want to know where this super nice box is from that's a oneplus 8 pro so if you want to check out that unboxing the link is in the top right corner but if you notice, for the iPhone SE, portrait mode only works with people, not objects. And that's because Apple haven't included a second lens. Now let's dive into these pictures and some other ones. Just pause when you want to, have a look at the pictures, judge for yourself. So the rear camera, like I said, records at 4K 60. If I just walk normally, this is what the stabilization looks like. And it actually looks really, really stable right now. I don't know if that's how it's going to end up looking like, but it looks really pretty cool. Uh, the iPhone video is usually one of the best. And even though this is the SE, it is no exception. Very, it's lit very well. You see it was a bit overexposed there, but yeah. Anyway, so when you think of the microphone, what do you think of the video? And yeah. 
So for a $400 phone, me personally, I have no complaints about the camera. So camera aside, as for everything else, well, this guy has an IP67 water and dust resistance, which basically means it can be dropped in a body of water up to a meter deep for half an hour. For flagship, that's standard, but for a budget phone, I definitely appreciate it. Now, as for externals, I definitely wouldn't say it's pleasant. Like I said earlier, this is a 2014 design, which was using the iPhone 6. That was a long time ago. You've got the ugly black bars at the top and bottom, but we've got Touch ID now. But basically, without going into crazy details, it's the exact same design as the iPhone 8, except the Apple logo is now centered in the back of the phone to match the newer lineup. Now, this was a good opportunity for them to use USB-C instead of a lightning port, but it's Apple. Though, this would have saved them money in manufacturing, because since this is using the older design, this basically means that the manufacturing cost will be much cheaper. And Apple are really the only ones who can really get away with that, so that's why adding something like a USB-C port would change that up. But overall, this design was just a safe way for Apple. It allowed them to create a cheap phone that people were familiar with, so that people could willingly put $400 forward, knowing that they're gonna get what they expect. Unlike most phones today, it's actually thinner, but it's smaller as well, and it works in one hand. If you notice, throughout this whole video, I wasn't struggling to reach all parts of the screen, and it actually was something that I kind of missed. And so, overall, there are two buyers who are gonna buy this phone. First one being the person I spoke about earlier, someone who's familiar with the design and therefore comfortable enough to throw in $400 and wants something that's gonna last them and function well and most importantly, main point is an iPhone. The second buyer is someone who, like me, uses an Android but also uses a MacBook and an iPad and so it would help if they had an iOS side phone. So just a second, cheaper, smaller phone that they could use to access the ecosystem when they're on the go. Also being a phone that they can airdrop from and they can open their Apple files from. And there are a lot of people out there who need that specifically. So to those people, this is for you. As I swipe away through the phone, you can see there's no lag. The A13 Bionic is doing its thing. And don't forget, you're still getting 2020 internals. You're getting wireless charging. You're getting those essential 2020 features that make a phone functional in 2020. So I've said everything I need to say. This was a pretty short review because there's not much to say on this. It's like reviewing an iPhone 6, which is just fast, to be honest. But for the most important question, should you buy this phone? Well, if you're already considering it, and you've clicked on this video because you're considering it, then you probably should go and buy this phone. If you're not sure whether you want to consider it, then ask yourself these questions. First off, do you want to use an iPhone? If the answer is no, then move on. You're not going to use this. But if you do, if the answer to that question is yes, then the final question is, would you want to spend more for something that has a nicer form and a nicer feel to it? Or do you want to spend just 400 on something that will get the job done for a long time? If yes, then you've seen everything you got to see. The phone is fast. It is small. There's space between my fingers when I wrap my whole hand around it. Like, think about that in comparison to other phones for a minute. It supports wireless charging, it can withstand water, it has a good camera, it's an iPhone. So if the answer to those two questions was yes, then my answer is... Welcome to iPhone. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like for the YouTube algorithm. It helps me out a lot if you do that. And even more so, please subscribe if you're new to the channel because I'm trying to work my way up and the channel is still kind of small. So check out my Instagram and Twitter at the Romeo Magar, by the way, for a lot of tech-related posts and a behind-the-scenes perspective and feedback and all that. And that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.